Welcome to Simple Entomology for the Fly Tire and Fly Fisherman, Part 3. I'm Raj Kletke. It's a beautiful midsummer to early fall day. There's a slight breeze, and we're going to fish the meadow section of this river. We see no rising fish, but as we walk towards the river, there are many grasshoppers flying out of our way. It's no surprise that we'll start with a grasshopper today. In these conditions, a grasshopper is a great searching fly. It's large so both I and the trout can easily see it. Additionally, the grasshopper represents a lot of food energy to the trout, so they will come quite a distance to get a grasshopper. Note the overall bulk of the grasshopper and its very strong legs. Additionally, note that this particular grasshopper has long wings, while this grasshopper has relatively short wings. Let's tie a simple foam grasshopper. Many grasshoppers have yellow, so I'm using a yellow tying thread. For the body, I'm going to use either two to three millimeter thick light tan foam, although dark tan or other colors would be acceptable. The silhouette of a grasshopper has kind of a point at the tail, so I've pre-cut the foam for that shape. I next need to bind the foam down, again starting the foam on the near side of the hook, allowing it to roll to the top of the hook. I'll usually tie the foam in approximately three different places to hold it tightly to the top of the hook. I could use a bulkier cord of foam with some modifications, but for me tying with the flat foam has been easier and seems to be effective. The last tie down for the body is about two eye lengths from the front of the hook and will be the neck of this grasshopper. Next, I have to stack some hair for the wing. For those of you that are having trouble getting the hair tips to align correctly, don't forget that after the normal tapping of your hair stacker, that you should do some additional taps with your hair stacker at 30 to 45 degree angle. If you want the hair tips to be facing to your right, you should have the hair stacker tipped to your left. If you want the hair tips facing to the left, the hair stacker should be tilted to the right for the final tapping. After completing the final tapping, that angle is maintained and increased to horizontal before removing the base. The hair tips should then be nice and even. These hair tips are nice and even, and this next step is very much like tying the wing on an elk hair caddis. You measure for length, and then you pre-cut. Either elk hair or deer hair work fine. After pre-cutting, I spin the thread in a counterclockwise direction to get rid of thread kick, and then I can easily bind the hair into place at the neck that I previously created. Once the hair is bound tightly to the top of the hook, I like to add legs. I use rubber legs, and I like the looks of these yellow and black legs. I doubt the color is important, but I think the action of the rubber legs is. I simply hold the legs on the top of the fly and put two loose wraps over them to hold them somewhat in place, and then pull them into proper position at the sides of the hook. I then bind them tightly into place, and then fold the foam back, forming a nice bulky head similar to that of an actual grasshopper. Once the head is also bound tightly into place, I can move the thread forward to the front of the hook, make several wraps, and then whip finish in the usual fashion. When I've completed the whip finish, I clip the thread, clip the excess foam leaving a short collar, and then clip the legs to length. I don't think the length is all that critical, 
but I do want them to create a small disturbance in the water when I twitch the fly. This is the completed grasshopper fly as seen from below. It has a bulky silhouette with slight overlap of the wings and legs that, even though they don't look like grasshopper legs, can create a surface disturbance like grasshopper legs when the fly is moved. This simple foam grasshopper fulfills Hewitt factors quite well. Initially, it presents a globular surface disturbance, which as it approaches the trout has a sharp silhouette similar to a grasshopper. Some grasshoppers are passive, so it can be fished dead drift, but also slight movement can be created by twitching the fly, activating the rubber legs, causing micro movement. This is particularly useful in slower currents. A common technique with grasshoppers is to slap the grasshopper fly down within inches of the bank and twitch slightly before allowing it to dead drift. We haven't discussed what size grasshopper fly to tie yet. Let's first look at the grasshopper life cycle and then we'll come back to what size to tie. This is a grasshopper nymph. So is this. It's obvious that they look like small grasshoppers and have all the body parts of an adult. Therefore, they don't have to undergo a complete change to transform into an adult. So unlike the ant or beetle that we saw earlier that needed to undergo a complete change or complete metamorphosis, a grasshopper has to only undergo an incomplete change or incomplete metamorphosis to transform into an adult. Since the grasshopper nymph looks like a small grasshopper and is the growing stage, so there are variable sizes available when an adult is available, size may not be all that important. I commonly tie grasshoppers from size 10 to size 6. We've classified ants, beetles, and grasshoppers under terrestrials. Let's briefly look at a more scientific classification. Some of you may recall this scientific classification system. We will briefly use it in future videos, although memorizing it is not absolutely necessary. We have briefly and very incompletely discussed three orders under the class Insecta. And yes, they do have Latin scientific names that I would have a hard time pronouncing. Let's just remember that they're in the class insect, and we'll refer to them as ants, beetles, and grasshoppers. In the next video, Simple Entomology for the Fly Tire and Fly Fisherman Part 4, we'll go back to streams we've already fished or perhaps fish this new stream. There's still no rising fish, but we'll fish subsurface. See you soon.